Hi everyone, this is Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending March the 11th, 2022. Uh, here's what we see, of course, uh, Russia-Ukraine is dominating the news, but uh, it, it, the impact is really in commodities. So let's look at that for just a second here. So really what we generally see in the business cycle is uh, bonds peaking out first, and then followed by uh, a, a rising interest rates, uh, which were causing the bonds to go, and then that filters down into equities or stocks, and the stocks start filtering down, and then eventually, uh, the because of the inflation, uh, of, uh, that commodity uh, increases, commodity prices start spiking, they start doing well, and then, uh, and then that causes uh, inflation, and then the Fed has to increase interest rates higher, to control the inflation and that's what leads us to uh, to the down cycle or a recession uh, if you will and uh, in this instance when you've got a slowing growth economy with higher interest rates could lead to stagflation there's some argument that that may be the cycle that we're, we're locked up in but I'm here to persuade you it doesn't have to be and uh, and here's why so so the the bonds they seem to have peaked around 2020 and have been sliding off. I've been saying that for months now that uh, bond markets are kind of done. The uh, stocks now have seemed to have peaked uh, in November, December, and then now are, are falling back uh, down, maybe early January, very, very early, but they, they really started falling back off uh, after that. And so this is where we are now. We see the commodity prices spiking at an all-time high, highs that they haven't seen since 2008. And so, uh, uh, that tends to lead to, and you've got in the Fed meeting next week to talk about, uh, you know, instituting the, uh, the the rate hikes, and they admit now that they were behind the curve because of Russia Ukraine. Though probably uh, that 50 uh, basis point hike probably turned into 0 0.25, and they'll probably hold that. But let me give you some reasons why this doesn't have to be stagflation because. Uh, the, the other missing element of that equation is that the economy has to slow down. We, we're just finishing up uh, earnings trends, and so from the Zach's earnings trends report, then I'm going to show you that right now, uh, earnings for uh, the year over year right now for 2022 in the, in the growth context, basically, so I'm going to focus here on the S&P 500, okay guys? So the S&P 500 basic materials sector, uh, first quarter of 2022, uh, earnings growth up 42%, up 42%. Coming in second place, consumer discretionary at 21.9%. And uh, third was an aerospace 15.7% to the good side, followed by construction 14.2%. So. Uh, that is uh, uh, an argument or some data that, that counters the slowing economy argument. Let's go then into annual earnings because that's really earnings is where we're going to get, I mean, price earnings ratio, right? That's really what's the determinant factor in terms of stocks. And so for 2022, annual expectations then for consumer discretionary, number one, coming in at uh, a 68.3% uh, increase year over year. And uh, followed by aerospace, 38.9%. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, that's 38.6. Then we have uh, construction, 15.9. And then auto is 14.9% for annual earnings. So these are not, I mean, this is based upon the results that have come in. And so these, these are strong uh, numbers, in, in my opinion, uh, that they are. And so... How then would we expect those to flow out into the overall uh, S&P 500? Well, if you look at percentage care of market cap, we would see tech uh, coming in at 31.3%, finance 13.7%, and then medical coming in at 11.9%. So you would expect somewhere along those sectors of grabbing the biggest chunk of these earnings. So then technology, uh, the, the forward 12-month earnings picture, uh, the, we'll finish out the context looking like that. Tech come in at number one with 26.9, finance at 17.8%, and medical at 14.8%. So what we're really saying there is that if you're looking at this kind of robustness in earnings for the whole year, how is it going to be spread apart 
so I give you that information and you can judge accordingly as, uh, as, as the year wears on and as the market bears out. So it's tough. We've got some headwinds out there, but there's always a market somewhere. Right now with about an hour 45 left in the trading day and the trading week, all the weekly uh, uh, levels for all the major indexes are sitting at support and uh, tried to have a bull rally this morning on a little bit of good news, uh, hopefully out of Russia, Ukraine, that waned during the day. And so we'll see how it all, fall, all falls out next week. But there are bright spots. You just got to know where to look and you got to know where to find them. We may not be getting double digits this year, but we're going to get in the high singles because uh, that's the hard work that we do. And that's what makes us happy. We want you to be happy so that you have a long life, you have longevity on your side. So until next week, you stay happy and we'll see you then.